I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about does no contact work if your ex is in a new relationship? So, this is a question we get asked a lot because many of you find out that after your breakup, your ex is dating or talking to new people, and obviously, it causes a lot of anxiety. So, First of all, let me say that yes, no contact does work when your ex is dating someone new. However, there is a process to it. And I'm gonna go into a lot of details today and I'm gonna even share uh, an email coaching that you're gonna see a lot of the things that I'm talking about coming out. You know, because if you're going through a breakup, it's bad, right? It hurts but it feels so much worse if you see your ex dating somebody else or you hear that your ex is dating somebody else. That just takes it to another level because you know, before you know about that, you're thinking, okay, it's a lot easier for them to come back. But if you hear that they're dating somebody new, you're probably thinking, well, now all these other things have to happen before they come back. It's gotta fall apart with this new person or you know, that relationship has to end and it's gonna make it a lot more difficult. But let me tell you guys a lot of what we often see, okay? Because I know in the beginning, the new person that your ex is dating seems great. They seem amazing. Uh, they seem perfect because they don't really know them. They don't know this person yet. But when you're on the other end of that, it just feels like, well, that's it. They're going to ride off into the sunset. They're going to forget about me. They're going to marry this person. And you kind of assume that your ex is going to attach to this new person the way they attach to you. And, and you also kind of think that the new person is going to attach to your ex the way that you attach to your ex. Okay, but getting to that point doesn't happen very often. Yes, it can happen. I'm not going to say that it doesn't, but more often than that, it's more of a rebound situation. That's a temporary thing. But in the beginning, obviously the new person looks so great and so amazing and wonderful and their brain has all these chemicals released and they just feel amazing, like a, almost like they're addicted to a, a drug or something and they're high on it. The person hasn't made any mistakes yet, so it kind of feels like a new fairy tale. But, over time, it doesn't sustain. It doesn't work like that, right? I'm gonna give you a good example that I was thinking of to help you guys understand that. Because you can't compare something that's a fantasy, something that's not real, a fairy tale, to something that's actual, re actually real with substance that's happening day in and day out, right? With, because there's gonna be real issues that come up in time even if that person happens to be wonderful and great, they're still gonna have their problems. It's, it's just not magical like that, okay? So here's something I want you to consider. Imagine that you wanna be a professional basketball player and it's been your whole lifelong dream to play in the NBA. It's what you always wanted to do. You've fantasized about it for many years, okay? Well, the idea of that is very different than actually being in the NBA, okay? It's a different experience. You see, when you're on the outside looking in, thinking about that fantasy, it's all kind of like magical. You're just thinking about, oh, playing in the game and scoring the winning point and whatever, right? I, I, I worked with a lot of kids back in the day when I was working locally, 
and a lot of them fantasized about being professional athletes. I heard about the NBA all the time. So that's why this came to mind for me as a good example of it, okay? But the real life NBA player, they're constantly traveling. It's tiring, it's grueling. There are reporters asking you difficult questions. You're being hounded, stalked in the street. People are yelling at you in other stadiums. They're cursing at you. They're insulting you and your friends and their family. You're being attacked in the press. There are a lot of negative stories about you. There's, you're under a, like a microscope all the time with your life, a magnifying glass of everything going on with you. You might get hurt and now half of your fans are angry at you because you're hurt. Um, you might get traded. You might have your friends traded. So you can see that the fantasy of it is very different than the day you've been drafted where it's more like a dream and this fantasy and it's amazing and it's perfect. And so what I'm trying to get you to see is that yes, in the beginning it seems like a dream, but it usually doesn't get to the six month mark. Now that seems like a long time, yes, but what I'm saying is it usually doesn't even get there because that is kind of like when it shifts to like a longer term attachment about needs and giving and considerations and incorporating all kinds of things and values and stuff like that. So just understand that the excitement, the fantasy of something new is completely different than your real relationship that had a lot of meaning to it. Real relationships have issues. Okay, even the best relationships gonna have some kind of issues, right? Because we have our attachment issues. We can have mental health issues. We have stress. Sometimes you have kids involved or family or jobs. Real life is different than a, f a fantasy and a fairy tale and eventually that bubble bursts. It doesn't last forever. Just like the fantasy of a perfect relationship with you and your ex didn't last forever. Issues really come up ever over time. But it's difficult to leave them alone. I understand that. And I know that the self-discipline that it takes to watch your ex in a new relationship and go to somebody else and not be reactive to it is one of the most challenging internal battles that you're gonna have, okay? It takes a lot of emotional self-control and strength not to be begging and pleading and lowering your value to your ex, but you can do it, okay? Because believe it or not, the space that you're allowing by being in no contact and not reaching out to them is going to have an impact on them. And I know it doesn't feel like it will, but it will, it just takes time. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's a process, okay? You don't wanna get involved. You don't want to try and sabotage the new relationship as tempting as it can be. It just makes you look petty. And oftentimes it will cause your ex to bond with this new person more because now they're looking at your behavior and they're discussing it. So don't reach out to that person and get information because it's likely going to blow up and it makes you look bad and you don't want to look bad. So don't meddle. Don't get in the middle. Don't try and sabotage. The new person will make mistakes on their own. The anxious avoidant trap is destined to come out, right? It always comes out. And they may find that they have different values than they were each looking for, or just have different things in mind for life or how they wanna share their life. It just very rarely lines up. And when that happens, a lot of times you'll start to hear from your ex. Even when they're in the new relationship, it's not going as good as they thought it would. And so now they're trying to connect with you because they're scared that they're going to lose you. And it's confusing. They're like, well, why can they be with this other person and want me too? You can want two things at the same time. They could be unsure and going back and forth. And as they see more and more red flags of the new person, they start to miss all the good qualities that you have. And because you've been acting attractively, 
they start to feel that shift and start to regret their decision. Now, I have a really good email coaching that's gonna get into some good examples here of what I'm talking about. So I think you guys, guys are gonna like this one. They said, hi Coach Craig, I am so thankful for all your videos. You've gained a fan for life. I'm definitely gonna do a Skype call with you in the near future. I honestly have never seen a dating or breakup coach like you. Thank you for being honest about your breakups. It has made me feel a lot better about myself. Winky face. <laughs> I think that's a backhanded compliment. Uh, or is it an insult? What's going on with that? My boyfriend and I have been together for almost five years. We started dating when we were 23 and I'm the only girlfriend he's ever had. I was in a beautiful relationship before my boyfriend left me. I still love him and I can't stop thinking about him. I'm doing my very best to get rid of those thoughts, but I'm struggling. I love him so much, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to trust no contact, but does it work when your ex is a new, in a new relationship? Yes, it does. It just takes time. Most of our relationship has been good, but we've had our ups and downs. But honestly, the problem was rarely with us. Most of our problems has been caused by outsiders, particularly his mother. Craig, this woman has caused him and I a lot of drama over the years. I think she may be bipolar. She goes from manic episodes like quitting a job to take a vacation that she can't really afford to crippling depression where she doesn't leave the house for weeks. So you could see she's the one interfering with this relationship. That would cause a lot of stress on him, right? A lot of guilt. When she struggles, she uses a lot of guilt out here. I, yeah, I knew it. I knew it was coming. She uses a lot of guilt to make him feel bad about living his own life. She will get all kinds of attention from him, which takes up a lot of our time and then drops him as soon as she finds a new man to give her attention. So you can see how finding someone new might be imprinted on him. This is what his mother does. She finds a new guy, gets new attention from this guy, has a breakup, pulls the son back in. He feels guilty watching mom go through this and then she keeps doing it to him. So that would have an impact on why he might do this to her meaning the person that's been broken up with, finding somebody new like he's done, right? He broke up with me in January. I started putting pressure on him to get away from her, seeing how she was poisoning our relationship. The more I tried to get him to see it, the more he would defend her. After about a month, I don't think he could take both of us stressing him out, meaning the mom and her. He said he feels too much pressure not sure what he wants anymore and wants to figure himself out. He said, maybe we should start dating other people to make sure I'm really what he wants. It almost felt like he was trying to force himself to do it. I didn't fight him. I saw enough of your videos where I knew it would make things worse. Well, it does. And it raises your value to act confidently, not to be threatened or to at least act threatened by a new person. Internally, you could be screaming all day, all, all night, whatever you want to do, but keep that to yourself. Around him, you want to show that you are confident and not threatened by somebody new because it's insecure to beg and to chase to some, somebody. And if you use the manipulative strategies like handwritten letters, clean slate messages, good reminder texts, all those things. It just is unattractive and it makes this new person look more attractive. Acting confident is the best thing you can do, okay? You don't wanna keep reaching out where it comforts your ex that they know they still have you, that they can relax in this new relationship, not stress losing you. You want them to wonder about you where you're at, what you're doing, and think, well, if I keep going with this new relationship, I could lose my ex, which they will struggle with that internally. They're probably just not gonna tell you that. So you don't wanna be unnatural in trying to recreate your connection with your ex because 
This new person isn't acting unnatural with them. They're not stressed about the outcome. They're not stressed if they wind up with your ex or not. For them, it's relaxed, it's easygoing, it's carefree, and it's exciting. So you're going to struggle to compete with that fairy tale. But as the bubble bursts and they don't look so perfect anymore, now they start to miss you more and more. A little bit more in this email. I have to admit, I was doing as much stalking as I could to find out about her. That's normal. As far as I can tell, she doesn't have a decent job. I don't think she went to college or has any kind of trade. She has a few roommates that look even worse shape than she does. Okay. Yeah, we can become detectives, can't we? And you try and get as much information about this new person as possible. You're constantly comparing yourself to this new person. And I see that often um, because you, you're afraid that this new person is perfect and amazing and they're going to wind up marrying them. But honestly, you're spending a lot of time focused on something that probably isn't going to last. You should make the personal growth your priority for when they do return, okay? There's a little bit more. Honestly, this girl seems like a mess and I don't understand why he would choose her over me. Well, his mom is kind of a mess, so maybe there's some unconscious connection going on there. She doesn't seem like relationship material. She's always partying and doesn't look like anything he would be attracted to. Yeah, and in the long run, he's going to probably see that for himself. I, I think he will, because you had such a good relationship, and it was really mom that sabotaged this. He's going to have to individuate from mom and say, Mom... I love you, I wish you the best, and I'm here for you, but this is who I want to be with, and you got to stay out of it. I need you to support my decision to be with her. And I think he's going to have to stand up with, to her at some point. He's just not ready to do that yet. Now, many of you are catastrophizing, thinking that this new person is so great and wonderful and amazing. In her situation, she doesn't have to suffer with that, right? Because she sees this new woman doesn't really compare what she brings to the table. And that's always nice to know, right? Because you can re really get into a downward spiral when you start to compare. And then you can start to think things like, did you ever really love me? How could you find somebody so quickly? How could you leave me? And you start to think about everything that you did wrong. But you probably did a lot of things right. And you probably were great to them in a lot of ways. And they need to see that again for themselves. And staying in no contact is the best way for them to go through the process of realizing this new person isn't so great and the loss of you in their life and all the things that you brought to their life. Because I'm sure that you brought a lot of great things to their life. And exes do see that over time. But the more confident that you can become, the more you can leave them alone and show them strength. I can handle this. If that's what you want, I understand. Not acting threatened by somebody new. Not trying to sabotage the relationship or insulting this new girl to him. The more likely he's going to naturally be reattracted to you. Do your best to take the high road and let things play its course naturally. In the meantime, you just focus on being the best version of yourself and that way when he comes back or she comes back, whatever your situation is, they're a lot more naturally attracted to you and they can see that you're no longer anxious the way you were or controlling or you're communicating better or you're more patient and understanding that than you were previously. Now, every situation is so different and every breakup is so different. Believe me, all my calls throughout any given day are very, very different. And that's why we offer coaching for you guys. Now, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course and my workbooks on my website. They will really help you become more confident and work through your attachment issues. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.